Well, let's just turn into Mega Mailbag. Mega Mailbag. We've got four more items. Well, mailbag time. I've got lots here. Now, this is a review item. Should be interesting. Pretty new. Also, got merch. Check it out. Check out the links down below if you're interested in my merch. Help support the channel. If it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. And also, if you like the video, don't forget to hit like as well. Right, these are some Ethernet joiners. RJ45 joiners, I suppose you could really say. So it's just a female to female joiner. You have a nice bit of female to female action. Oh wait, this is, no, Ethernet, Ethernet joiners. So if you've got two cables and you've got a cable which is maybe not quite long enough, you can then just join another cable on the end of it. Now obviously, ideally you don't do that, but in some situations having something like this will get you out of trouble. I had one, I used it. I thought I'd better get some more. Box from Digikey, I don't remember what I ordered. It wouldn't have been that long ago either, but yeah, yeah no, I, I just don't remember. I do like DigiKey's packaging because it's all fully recyclable. And it's also really effective. This is how every else should be doing it. And these bags, resealable bags, so if you need bags for things like I often do, you can just reuse the bags for something else instead of just throwing them away, single use. This is how RS and M14 should do it. DC to DC converters, plus or minus 15 volts, 2 watts. This is an ID 0515D slash P. These are some more DC to DC converters, plus or minus 12 volts, 2 watts, RD0512D slash P. Three of them. These are some reed switches. Some ones I tried before worked out okay, so I thought I'd get some more. They're good. And another DC to DC converter, plus or minus 12 volt. This is a 12 volt version, so I'll explain these codes. This is an RD1212D, alright? So 12-12 means it's 12 volt input, 12 volt output. Uh, the 05-12 means it's 5 volt input, 12 volt output. So it steps it up as well. So I actually needed some of these for the Retro Chip Tester Pro for the power supply expansion that goes on there to do give you more versatility as far as testing chips. I didn't order the DC to DC converter at the time. One of these is the right one. I think it's the 05-12. So it means I can finish building that board and have the thing fully completed. If you haven't seen the Retro Chip Tester, I did do a bit of a video on it. I was doing a live stream and I showed me doing the final assembly and testing on that thing. Awesome piece of gear. Highly recommend it if you do lots of older ICs. You know, it's based on old stuff, but it tests lots of stuff. Also, thanks to my Patreon supporters and everyone who does the YouTube memberships and stuff. Also, oh, that's something I've recently got. Super thanks. There's a little icon down the bottom there to set like a super thanks thing. You can donate to my channel, just like a one-off thing. I think you can do like a special comment or something. I've been asking YouTube for it for ages because the feature's been out for ages. I've only just got it. If you want to help support the channel, we can just do a little super thanks. It just gives you a donation. You want to do that? It's also much appreciated. What is this? Ah, right, okay. I think that's just that. Get it. It is just that. So this is a paper feed kit for a printer. And focus now. So this is used on brother printers. In fact, it's used on these brother printers. So we actually have this one here, the HLL 6200DW. Awesome printer. I've had it for a couple of years now, uh, maybe three years actually, and it, it's really good. But we do a lot of printing on it, so. We use it in events and stuff. So this is basically a feed kit, right? So where you've got a paper pickup on your the tray on your printer, you've got a roller here, which is like a special rubber roller, and you also have a pinching plate, which it, you know is used as well to help grip the paper underneath so it doesn't misfeed and suck in several sheets at once, sort of thing. Now the printer we've got we've done a lot of printing on it, thousands and thousands of prints, and this plate here, which has got like a rubber pad on it, 
is showing signs of wear. It's got a bit of a depression in it. We have had a few issues with misprints, like it's done a misfeed where it's not held the page in place in the past few months. It's done it a little bit. I've given it a clean, it's been slightly better, but um, I thought I'd better get one of these kits. But what I found is that these are actually getting really hard to find. There was a guy in China on AliExpress selling these, well, a couple of them actually, but well, that's probably the same person. Ordered those, never turned up, nothing even got shipped, nothing even left the country. So, yeah, they never got money back on those, and then this one I had to get off eBay at a slightly more ridiculous price. Yeah, hopefully it's alright. I might have to look at getting another one, just so I've got one for future use as well. This lasts about three years, and it's a really good printer, but yeah. I don't know what this is actually, this is a bit of a mystery. Ah, now I know. This is a review item from Banggood. So I actually requested this because I wanted to have a look at one. So we're doing a proper video on this. Doing a proper review. Check it out fully. Chuck on my calibrator. I might check it against my references and that sort of stuff as well. And get the bag. So it's a mass tool. Graphical multimeter. I don't think it's got any batteries in it, is it? Nah, if it's too light. So it's a multimeter, but it's also got like a graphical display as well. So it's a bit like an oscilloscope sort of display, so you can actually see waveforms and stuff on it. I thought we'd have a look at it and see how good it is. It might be useful. Um, takes three AA batteries. Yeah, three AA batteries. It's telling you the sequence to install them in. So that's the MT8206. So watch out for that video. So if you're interested in watching my multimeter reviews, I've got a playlist, which I might stick up the corner up there maybe. There, up there somewhere, maybe. If you can't find it, then get look at my main channel, go to my main page, look at my playlist, and there's a playlist there for multimeter reviews where I'm checking out lots of different multimeters from different manufacturers and all sorts of stuff. I've got some interesting ones, I've got some flukes and co-eats and must tool and this will be added to that playlist once I do the review. You want to make sure you see this, this could be quite a good one. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. Anyway, we'll look at that in time. Should be interesting. So like I said, I'll put it on my calibrator and my references and we'll see how accurate this thing is when I actually uh, do the review. Definitely should be interesting. Thanks a lot Banggood for sending that to me at no cost. Should say that too. Review items are usually at no cost. And there's some information about the ultimate there. In case you want to know a bit more about it before you see the review. Find out what's in this thing. It's a bag. This is a you know, 14 SN74LS06N. I'll chuck a data sheet up. It's a uh, buffer driver hex inverter. These were used in the HP 3561A, which I repaired recently, and I bought a whole bunch of parts, and now I've got loads of these as well. Usual thing. I see a part thinking, ah, that could be something which I need to use in future as well, and I'll buy some, and I'll have a stock of them. And there's a good chance I'm going to die one day with a stock of all these parts which everyone's going to want. Of course they'll be rusty by then, but you know, people might still want them. I'm not going to do this just yet. This will be the last thing we do. We'll do this one first. It's bigger. Again, this is also a mystery. Oh, there's multiple packages in here. Oh, exciting. Well, this just turned into a mega mailbag. Mega mailbag. We've got four more items. So I was playing around recently with a different camera setup for my live streams. I realised I didn't actually have enough versatility in the mounts I've got, so found some more mounts. These are like some joiners, and you can just angle them one direction like this. So these are supposed to be like cold shoe mounts, hot shoe mount kind of thing, you know. So it means you can angle things or join two things together which have the same mounting on them. So I've got a few of them. They look alright. They're plastic, but they look okay. They'll probably be fine for a while. Should do the job. Don't forget, also, there's always links down below for things too. So check the description out. Down there. In the bottom, you click the show more thing. It's right, it's right there somewhere. Click show more. Button caps. These are for moment shoe buttons, those uh, tactile buttons, those square ones, 6mm square tactile buttons, which got the black shafts come out of them. That's for those. 
They should fit the shafts, hopefully. I need to find out now. Where's the buttons? Hmm. Retro Chip Testers Pro. Got buttons on it. These aren't actually what I bought it for, they're for something else. Yeah, well, they sit over, they don't actually lock on. Or that one. That does work. So I guess you have to put them on and glue them on or something. I didn't buy them for this, I bought them for something else. I was hoping they'd be wedge fit, but they don't, don't appear to be. Oh well. It's okay, they still look nice. I got asked by someone again about why I use a RAM stick. That's not surprising, I do get asked from time to time about why I use a RAM stick to open mail. It doesn't damage stuff as much, right? It's quite soft, right? If I did that with a knife blade, I cut myself. Same thing with the packaging, right? If there's something in there like a wire or something delicate in there, using a RAM stick and, cut, and basically tearing through it, and it does cut slightly, it's much less likely to damage whatever's inside, because I don't know what's in these packages half the time. And I don't want to damage them. If I use the knife, there's a good chance I'll cut through something. And I have done that in the past. So that's why I use this. It's also a bit quirky, because who else uses a ram stick to cut open packages? And here's a cable. Uh, it's just an ethernet cable, nothing too exciting. Same as the one I got before, I think. Maybe just a different length. Uh, one meter long. Yeah, just an ethernet cable. RJ45 Cat 5E. Not exciting. Don't know what this is. It's got cling film as a handle. I have an idea what this could be, but I'm not sure. Do you want to take your bets? Go on. Put, put a comment down below. Go to the comments at the bottom and put down your guesses about what you think this could be. You have about 30 seconds to do that before I can get this thing open. I'm watching. Come on. Get down there. Still got the peak of electronics. Thing over here for view yet. Stick around and see that. That could be interesting. Oh, didn't know I'd never well, did I? <laughs> right, we have a power supply. DC power supply. 12 volt, 2 amps, center positive. Good to know because obviously that's not the right plug for my country. We have a HDMI cable. That might give it away. We've got something. What's that? Is that some kind of stand? It's a tablet stand. Okay, I don't know why I want to need that, but all right. <laughs> that could actually be handy. This could be convenient. Hold on. So I got this tablet earlier in the year. As a review item, I thought we'd get one because it could be good for looking at circuit diagrams and stuff like that on my desk when I'm doing repairs. I'm going to have a tablet next to me. Look at that. I bought this case separately because I had nothing to protect the screen and the camera and stuff like that. This will mean I could actually have this on the desk on a little stand like this. Popped up. Excellent. Very convenient. Didn't buy it for that, but um, I've got it. What's in this bit? Oh, let's find out what's in this bit. My wife will be pleased, they've got so much more bubble wrap now. We just threw away the last lot. <laughs> Probably mailbag, never any bubble wrap. I should show the pile of stuff actually. At the end of the mailbag video, I'll show you the pile behind me of all the stuff in the packaging. This is like what it ends up being like. So, HDMI screen. In the motorhome where we work on events, I have a web server, which is Raspberry Pi web server. I've done, done videos on that, setting nothing up as a web server. Showed you how to set up a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus as a web server, running PHP and MySQL and that sort of stuff. So I actually use that for events. And I've got a little 10-inch screen there, which actually came with my Ekins microscope. It came with that. It's quite an expensive screen with the microscope. I think it's a few hundred dollars on like a couple hundred dollars for the screen tonight. Anyway, I'm nervous that at an event, I've only got one screen. It's only 10 inches big, and it wasn't really meant for that. It's meant for my microscope, which is underneath my desk here. I use it occasionally, you know, rarely. So I thought I'd get another screen. So this is a wide screen. I think this is 12 inches, this one. So it's slightly bigger. It's got a HDMI, DVI, VGA. It's got a couple of other ports here. Looks like audio port and a power port up the top. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what these ones are for. Probably headphone and microphone, maybe. I don't know, because they just can go through the uh, 
HDMI or even DVI. I can see a circuit board there for those grills. I don't know about this one. But uh, yeah, 12 inch monitor. I just need a stand for it. Oh yeah, I suppose it kind of works. <laughs> hmm. Not really designed for that. It looks like it's a standard kind of thing. I've got um, the existing screen I've got, which has got a stand on it, is this fitment as well, is exactly the same. So it's got 30 footman here, it's just like a standard camera fitting. So I can probably sort something out without too much trouble. Moment of truth Peak. So Peak Electronics sent me this at no cost for review. It finally worked out. Oh, well, I missed. <laughs> it finally worked out. I've tried a couple of times in the past with the peaks as you uh, get reviews sorted out and do something. And for whatever reason, we never actually managed to get it sorted out. This never happened. This time, we finally got it sorted out. We got one. We got one. All right, so so uh, I was talking to Peak Electronics and said, hey, I'd like to review one of those. And they said, okay. And here it is. This is the ESR70 Gold. It's new. So I don't have the ESR, the original ESR meter already. I've got the Zen 50 and the DCA 75, DCA 50 I think it is. I've got a few testers, transistor testers and what have you. ESR meter something I've had on my radar for a little while, or the peak ones, I've already got others obviously. But the peak one I've had on my radar, I think, you know, I should, should get one of those and have a look at it. And then they published that, hey, they got this new one. I thought this is great. It's a new version. It's supposed to be faster as well. It's supposed to be faster than the original ESR version. I think it's ESR 70 and this is the gold version. I think gold is the difference. It's a new design. Yeah, it's waiting for a capacitor or something. That was a short bit, I think. I don't know. It's trying to do something. It's like gold plated tips. Analyzing a short, measuring C. Zero ohms. There you go. Working. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing a review on this, so again, as I said before with the other multimeter over here, make sure you subscribe if you want to see my reviews. Now, I'll be reviewing this, I'll be doing some testing on it, comparisons with my some other meters. I've got um, the East Tester ET4401 on my desk here, I've got the DR5000, I've got that, which is a, a nicely known and I suppose you could say proven OCR meter, but big. <laughs> and um, Peak Electronics are known for making really nice devices. I thought, right. We'll do a review on this. There's a manual here to look at as well. So I'll cover this in the review as well. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see how this thing performs and what sorts of features it has and what have you. So I'm going to be doing quite a thorough review on it, I think. That's the plan anyway. More toys. Always want more toys. That's always good. I click like if you like the video. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate minimum amount is two dollars up to whatever you want, and it just gives a bit of income, helps me to buy things in mailbag, bits of broken test equipment to fix that kind of thing. It just helps me to put more money into the channel and produce more content, which helps entertain you guys and creates more videos for you. YouTube's expensive, believe it or not. <laughs> don't make any money from this channel. Don't make any money at all. All the money I do get from advertising revenue, what have you, goes back into the channel. Over here is a playlist of things that I think you should watch. There's a playlist here that YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a Subscribe link right here if you haven't already done it, despite me telling you to do it. If you haven't done subscribe yet, go click that thing right now. Over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel. Bye.